Peace and blessings, y'all. This is your boy, Gerald. It is the 9th of February, 2016. How is everybody doing? So, in the beginning of your week, and you're starting to navigate through. So I'm starting my day and uh, I happen to catch paternity court. And, you know, like everybody, you know, you got those shows that will, they're more or less distractors. But just so happened, I happen to watch this one episode, <coughs> excuse me, where there was a, there was a young woman. And she had gotten to a point where she needed to find clarity in the paternity of her daughter. The problem was not seeking the paternity. The pro the pro excuse me, the problem was she hid the pregnancy because in the process she was also involved with someone else. So you fast forward nine months, the child is born. Five more months progress, and she finds herself back on the doorsteps of the man that genuinely loved her, which brought them to the show. And as a judge was reading the case, you could see that in her mind, she had convinced herself of the facts that were being presented, but there was no accountability there. On the other side, the courtroom was a man that you could tell genuinely had affection, had love, compassion for this woman, but only wanted truth. As the commercials come and go, you could see the disposition of the mother. She just wanted to be validated, but without accountability. And the whole time, the question was asked, why could you not be forthright? Why did you wait 15 months for paternity? Her disposition was, I was justified. But from the position of the father, he didn't understand because he was in the dark. And his position was, well, I saw her with another man. We made eye contact and I had a sense that she may have been pregnant. And I asked her through gesture not to intrude in what was being revealed. She denied it. I simply kept my dignity and I walked away. But what would end up happening was that same denial will come full circle. That same denial will reveal that the man that she was making midnight rendezvous and trysts behind closed doors would genuinely be the man that would break her heart. See, she didn't take accountability for the actions she'd already given because what was truth was there was someone there. 
So there was a foundation. And that foundation was secure. However, there was no control. And being that there was no control, you knew there was no communication. Because at any time, she could have simply picked up and went on about her way. But see, we live in a society, y'all, where it takes an act of Congress for someone to speak their truth. They have to be placed where their back is on the wall then to grind their feet and define who they are. This is very evident today. And that is why you always will hear what goes around comes around. What's done in the dark comes to the light. Because the energy, which is your actions, come from you. And those actions will eventually return. That's why I use the metaphor of planting spiritual seeds, because these are extensions of you. Your actions are representations of what defines your character. But what if you don't know you? What if you don't have a relationship with that little boy or little girl that's your discernment? What if your foundation is built off of impulse and it's not grounded? You can't imagine or expect anything to come out of it correct because it is fraudulent. That's why we live in a world of 7.5 billion people. And unfortunately, 50% of these people will never come to know who they really are. They will come to a position of settling, compromising. But here's the kicker about that. How are you going to know what to compromise if you don't know you? How are you able to find comfort in the choices you make? That is why it's so important to understand the two greatest gifts that God gave you. The first was to unconditionally love yourself. You will never find that outside your door. No matter who you are, what you possess, or what you look like, you will never be able to obtain that because that is found within yourself. I know I'm talking to someone. You're saying to yourself, well, Gerald, this is normal. I'm in my 20s. This is about the period of my life where I start to experience what life is. But what cost? Is it the cost of those tears and frustration that is found in silence because the embarrassment from the choices you make do not yield the response that you think you desire? I know I'm talking to someone. You have allegiance with your loyalty. And your loyalty is to your denial. And guess what? There's no love in that. There's no love. The support that you genuinely need, that is rightfully given. If God's not in the beginning of it, he can't be in the end of it. But guess what? Those demons, that devil, that Jezebel spirit, 
are banking that you won't. I know I'm talking to someone. You think, well, you know, if I rub my elbows with this person and the price to have affiliation is to do this or do that or say this or act like that, it will open more opportunities later on. But guess what? The more and more you look outside your door instead of what's found inside you, it's like putting on two left shoes. Sure, you can attempt to lace them up, but when you take your first step, the pain is there to remind you that this is not what you need. So it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to play out like you think it is. It just won't. Why? Because that is not you. So you got to understand something, y'all. As I mentioned before, the two greatest gifts God gave you was to unconditionally love yourself and the gift of free will. So you have the, you have the right to choose. Go forth, go back, go left, go right. Pick this up, put this down. This is, to some, your actions, your representation of self. So you got to understand that when you peel that emotional onion back, that the foundation is found in you, it's also going to have a direct reflection to the company you keep. I know I'm talking to someone. You've had an alliance, you've had a bond with someone that spans over decades. And the pain progresses as time goes by. They have showed you through their actions, through their conversations, that they will never have your best interest. And the reality is, they do not serve you, you serve them. And the moment that you do not do what's required, they remind you how loosely your affiliation is. I know I'm talking to someone. Let me tell you something. True friendships are far and few. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is because these people will earn the right to know your story because they will be there unconditionally. But we live in a world where Carpo Diem, better known as seize the moment, seize the day have spawned opportunists and something that should be treasured and honored and preserved is used as a resource, not looked at as a commodity. So what happens? What you thought was a reality is really your despair. So to go back to the story, that was on. As the judge was very, which, which she was very careful how she conveyed her questions. She was sensitive. She asked, if you had a doubt, why wouldn't you have did the right thing if you genuinely care, why didn't you put your child first? And she looked, she tooted her nose, because the reality is the truth. The truth was she didn't care about 
her daughter's well-being. She didn't care because she was thinking about herself. She was thinking about the reality of you're going to be a single mom and you're not going to have the support unless you come correct. So on the other side of the court, the potential father stood. Not one time did he say anything negative towards the mom. In turn, every time the judge would say, well, how are you able to navigate raising your daughter when you had someone that didn't care about you? She said, I had to get real with myself because my lies I told have finally come back to me, which it does. That's how it is. You dealing with the spiritual realm because people don't see what you're doing in the dark, don't think they don't know. But the people that see you in the light to have access to you. If they don't walk in honor with themselves first, they'll never honor you. You know why they won't honor you? Because they have yet to know who they are. I know I'm talking to someone. You think because how you look in the mirror you are God's gift to one. You have a mouthpiece that oozes sensuality. To some, you seem to be very responsible. But you are going through a cycle of discontent. And you are attracting women that will not honor you and you frustrated. You've convinced yourself, I don't want love. I don't want to have nothing to do with love. I just want to live. Well, you're doing exactly that. But what is living if you don't claim your life? I know I'm talking to someone. Do you realize if you give one second to a person that will never see your worth, that's just like being robbed. But if you don't ground your feet to speak your truth, you'll never be able to take accountability nor see the direction of where you're headed. But you have some that feel that, well, you know what? I'd rather be feared than loved. <coughs> Excuse me. And they make a pact with themselves instead of being a champion to what is broken. See, you have to be vulnerable and transparent to yourself first before you can demand that from your circle. That's why when you try to have that heart to heart, you might as well be talking in a foreign language. And you're frustrated. You say, well, maybe if I'm more attentive, if I go the extra mile, maybe they will see my loyalty through my actions. No. Your loyalty is found in your heart. That's what being compassionate is all about. That's why you, when you take it upon yourself to go out to the store and buy that ticket item, or you invest in this, the allure of the surprise is always temporary. Why? Because there's no love in that. There's no love. And it will constantly play that out until you decide to love yourself. So let's go back to the store. 
So the judge, with detail, being so sensitive about the situation, because at this time, the prospective father, he is a, uh, He's holding himself up, but you can see his emotions are coming to the surface. And the judge went back to the question she had asked. And she said, well, how, help me understand this. You had a relationship with a man. You told him he was the father. And then after a month after the birth, he walked away. But yet you had a man that was sitting there in non-judgment that wanted to walk with you and you couldn't see it. See, there is a reason why things like that occur, right? Don't you realize? because God loves us so much. He will give you your blessings before you even ready for it. He'll put you in positions that you know you did not deserve to see if you see the value of it. But if you don't see the value in you, that precious soul, guess what? You'll lose it. That's why I always convey to each and every one of you. Anything made with man's hands, with man's hands, comes with an expiration date. Well, your heart is not made by man's hands. That's made by God's direction. I know I'm talking to someone. Let me tell you something. How much time you going to let go by? How much despair you going to internalize until you have the courage to stand on your feet, look that beautiful person in the mirror, and say, I'm sorry. That's what being courageous is. See, it's not about going out and seeking validation or closure is what people want to use. Closure begins when you decide to allow the process to heal. I know I'm talking to someone. You got prescription pills because your nerves are shot. You got this pill. When you can't sleep, you got this pill when you got them aches. You got this pill when you feel low, and you got this pill to keep you level. But guess what? The greatest prescription you're going to ever have is love. See, I sympathize to some of you because. The truth is, y'all don't know what love is. You were never shown that. You may have come from an environment where there was nothing but pain. And what was being shown was there was no value of your presence. So somewhere along the way, you convinced yourself that, well, you know, What don't kill me make me stronger. But if God's not in it, it ain't blessed. I know I'm talking to someone. There's no surprise you're seeing what you're seeing. But see, the pain can go away, y'all. The pain can go away the moment that you take accountability for your life. Yes, I know I'm talking to someone. Inside your heart, you got that room. And in that room is all your disappointments. And it's big. 
all those shortcomings and promises that fell short. And you say to yourself, I don't have time to process this, so I'll stuff it away. Because if I address it with the proper attention that is needed, I may be perceived as weak. Let me tell you something. If your friends were your friends, they should be there when you on your knees, not when you're standing tall. I know I'm talking to someone. You say it to yourself when that cell phone goes off, I'm not going to give you time today. But yet your heart skips a beat every time. You say to yourself, if they do this one more time, that's the end of the road. But yet you won't turn around. You say to yourself, if I get another disappointment, I'm just going to, that is going to be the, the camel that brought the camels back. Don't you realize what's going on? Think about it. If it's intended for your life, it's ordained because it's meant. God will not give you struggle. He won't. But you know that devil? Yeah, the devil's known for using deception. He loves doing bait and switch. That's why when you're in your conversations, when you ask them something, they spin it. They're quick to say, I didn't say that. I meant this. Don't you see the deflecting going on? See, if these people had honor in your life, why could not be? Why couldn't they be forthright? Why couldn't they not give you what is right to be vulnerable, to be transparent? Any relationship without communication, sender, receiver, is not a relationship. It's a dictatorship. I know I'm talking to someone. So the reality is this, now you are in a world that can be perceived envious to the common eye, but little do they know the struggle that it took to receive that burden. Sure, from the outside, you got it going on, so they think, but you're shaking like a leaf because all you want is to be a million miles away from your truth. Your truth is your story. Your truth is your legacy. But guess what? You can't embrace it until you ground your feet. You can't stand up to take that first step until it's there. So does it surprise you that the disappointments come? And some have come in means of a force like a tidal wave. You get, you get smacked one way to get slapped another way by situation. And you say to yourself, I don't deserve this. You say to yourself, what did I do that was so wrong? I know I'm talking to someone. The truth is, until you take accountability for your life, you can't live it. You can't live it. You're just a carbon copy or a cookie cutter shell of the real you. That's why there's no peace at night. That's why you're having a hard time going to sleep. That's why when you're in that relationship and you are physically exchanging through intimacy, you don't feel no connection. The connection is love. 
So once again, if you don't love you, they can't love you because they don't love themselves. So all you're doing, you're doing, you're no different than being on a boat with no oars in the middle of a sea. You're going to and fro. You're not in control of it. But really, when you think about it, you never was in control of it because without God directing your steps, you will never know where you're going. You'll constantly be on the defense. Your life is not supposed to be feeling like you're going through a disposition, like you're on trial. If you're spending more energy having to justify who you are, what you do, that's not where you're supposed to be. I know I'm talking to someone. She turns around and every time she can, she makes note, well, I did this, I did that, I did that, you wouldn't have this. Not looking at the effects. See, a lot of people don't realize that words have power, y'all. Don't realize that. And I, I, and I personally, I'm, my position is it, it is a direct correlation of how we were raised. This is what makes our psyche. So let's add the dynamic of what if there, there wasn't, what if your father and mother wasn't there? What if it was one-sided? That means you would only have half the understanding that you need. That's why a lot of times you see people trying to make those jagged edges smooth. But what they end up doing, you end up paying far more than what the price initially was to possess it. I know I'm talking to someone. She likes to put her hands on you, but you won't ground your, you won't see your worth and walk out of that situation. You are caught up on the possessions of the relationship, not the ability to be possessed in the relationship. I know I'm talking to someone. What's the point on having the house of your dreams if there's no love in it? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about your dream home. And I turn around and facilitate all your desires. At first, the allure will be like, wow. Can't believe it. Wow. You and just, but guess what? There's no emotional connection. It's no different than a like a wedding ring almost. You give a person a ring, the sparkle always keeps them focused. But if there's no love under it, it becomes just another ring. That's You can apply that to any physical possession. If there's no love under it, there's no honor. If there's no honor, there's no value. If there's no value, it's pointless. And that is why 60% of marriages fail. Because it's not about give and take. It's not about putting the work in. I don't care if you make six figures. No woman's going to stay with you if you don't honor them. I don't care. You could look like you fell off of a magazine cover. No man is going to stay with you if you don't honor him. But you look at what's out there in society today. Society is so shallow. Society is filled with nothing but arrogance. Until life, but I like to look at it as divine intervention. Because let me tell you something. I know I'm talking to someone. What's the point on living if you're not living your life? 
But what's the point of having a life if God ain't in front of it? You think that you're supposed to go through life with, with cuts and scrapes, a disappointment? 65% of your disappointments are correlated to decisions that you made in your past. That's why it's very important, y'all. You want true peace? You got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive that little boy and that little girl that lives inside your spirit. Because that's who you owe it to. The real you. Because if you don't have a relationship with the real you, the person that walks out your door is an imposter. You're not living your life. I know I'm talking to someone. You say to yourself, well, you can say that, girl. I got a, I got my dream job and I got my degrees on the wall. I got all the materialism, but I don't have the man to share it. You think God's going to give you that man? But more, more importantly, guess what? You ain't going to be yoked. Because guess what? He's going to have his own. That's why every time that you take it upon yourself to go find Mr. Right, you always track Mr. Wrong. I know I'm talking to someone. Because see, Mr. Wrong don't care about you. Mr. Wrong comes in the door with an agenda. He don't even care what comes out of your mouth because He's going to listen for about five minutes, and he's going to start pulling them panties off. I know I'm talking to someone. And you're saying to yourself, well, that was the deal. No, you made a deal with the devil. And the person knocking on your door is nothing but a demon incarnated in that person's physical form. And it's going to play out that way until... You can be truthful with yourself. Maybe now is the time that you humble yourself and have that conversation with God. And let me clarify this. Because I had someone ask me, because I, I deal with a lot of people. I get a lot of correspondence, and I thank you for your honesty. And remember, your correspondence is a representation of you. So if you don't speak truth, I can't give you the truth you need because I'm basing it off of what you convey. So it should be pure. A lot of people have this misconception because of the roads, the roads you may have been on that God ain't trying to hear it. You may be feeling, well, you know what, Gerald? I didn't slept with over 150 guys. And I did it because I wanted I wanted to love. I wanted to feel love. And you may think that a physical connection with another human being will give you what you long for in your heart, but you've come to realize it don't. And that's why that stone is in your heart. That's why that anger is like that. You go zero to 60 because you want what you don't have. You don't have it because you don't put forth effort. You may have convinced yourself through the environment that you cohabitate with because of your friend's disposition that there's a, a means of self-entitlement. Let me tell you something. You're being deceived because you can have that, but you'll never be yoked. That's just like preparing your favorite meal and you don't have taste buds to enjoy it. What's the point? That would be that would be very cruel, you know. Let me tell you something. The more and more that you decide to make those steps, take that step to get back to you. Now, and let me tell you something. Your friends as you know them now, 
aren't your friends. And I'll prove it. If they don't have a relationship with God, an authentic relationship with God, they're just laying in wait. Because if they genuinely were your friends, guess what? When you act up, act out, because you're doing no you're doing no different than what a child is doing, but you're grown, you're older, so you should know better. If they condone your behaviors, they don't have your best interest because a real friend will tell you when you're wrong. But here's a correlation in that too. Just as you're going through things, they're going through things too. And don't you see what's going on? Misery, loves company that is on under the boot the devil wears despair anarchy deceit manipulation these are all tools that he uses to keep you from your life i know i'm talking to someone and let me clarify something with you too because i had someone reach out and they said well Gerald." This person was very, the word I can come up with is brave. And really, it doesn't have anything to do with being brave. It's being transparent. And they said, well, you know, I started off being sexually active at a very, very young age. And it was because I didn't get the attention and the affection in my home. So I did what every little boy, little girl would do. I gravitated where the attention was. And that put me in a lot of vicarious situations. I saw things that I shouldn't have seen and I experienced things I know I shouldn't have. And in turn, it had a price. But I knew deep down inside, there was always something better. So, because the choice is made, they're having a hard time having a true mate, a true companion. Let me explain something to you. You're not getting punished because of what you want. God is holding back what you need until you're actually able to look that person in the mirror. I know I'm talking to someone because that man or woman is going to be spiritual. That's why in the Bible, you don't never hear about, you know, a, a, a spiritual man wants a woman that's provocative. No, he wants a virtuous woman. But being a virtuous woman doesn't make you exempt of having a testimony. I know I'm talking to someone. You're thinking, well, you know, my strong suit is my sexuality, Gerald. Okay. But if you put the same effort in your sexuality, in your emotions, don't you think that you could filter the people that have access because you would know your worth? What separates a weed from a rose? They both have a stem. They both have petals. They both live. But that rose takes a little bit more time for it to develop, that we continues to grow until it dies. Your life is that flower. And the intended person will treasure that. Does it surprise you? You hanging with your boys? Y'all in your 20s, but because of the wear and tear of your health, Y'all, y'all bodies are like y'all in your fifties. The commonality is your pops wasn't in your life. I know I'm talking to someone, so you are exchanging false wisdom amongst yourself, trying to find manhood. Let me tell you something. You're not gonna find a book on how to be a true man. You're not gonna find one unless you go to the main source. But social standards don't validate emotional needs. 
So guess what? It goes back to that second gift God gave you, the gift of free will. If your affiliations and your alliances with the people that you give access to your life feels like a tug of war, those that's a battle you ain't supposed to be in. When you're down and out, things going on, life starts to show you the reality of the choices made. Where are you? Where, where are they at? Where are they at? Can't find them. But the moment that you start to make sound decisions, oh, they're quick to be there then. And depending on what it is, they're quick to try to talk you out of it because they don't want you to grow. But they don't have the courage to tell you that. They start planting things in your head. So you start self-doubting. See, that's what the devil does. But let me tell you what. That the most I am, the alpha, the omega, my God, when he gave you the breath of life, your legacy was written. But guess who got to look at it? That's right, the devil. And he saw greatness in you. It's not by chance you're starting to tap into some of your natural gifts. But there's a price for that. And it's got you feeling a certain kind of way because you know there's a calling inside you. You ain't understand it. You don't understand it yet, but you know there's something meant for you to see something meant for you to embrace a direction to take and you've seen nothing but opposition every time you try to go near it. why the devil can't afford that to occur so guess what send in the clowns send in the distractions send in the desires it may be temptation some of y'all might be in relationships right now and you're saying, man, I wish I didn't get married. Where were you when I need, where were you? Let me tell you something. If you step into a relationship and you take a vow, mind you, you're taking it with God, but you did it by agenda, you are going to pay a significant price. And it's not because of the fact that you deceive God. The price is because you willfully chose to deceive yourself. Do you realize there are people married for the wrong reasons? But the backlash are the themes that your vow is about. To honor, to protect, to love, to cherish, to sick her in health. Oh. But you notice your burdens have all those signatures. Why? Because that person rightfully didn't do the work. They didn't deserve to hear you breathe. And because you didn't see your worth, now they're attached to you. You know what you're witnessing? You're witnessing what we know is a soul tie that is a spiritual contract not forged by love it's forged by lust so you might as well have been standing in front of the devil himself saying hey i'm going to allow you to open the gates of hell in my life and if i'm able to get these little trinkets to come with it. I know it's going to have an effect on my mind, body, and spirit. I know I'm talking to someone. You're a prisoner to your prescriptions. You know why you're a prisoner to your prescriptions? Because you will not allow yourself to heal. You're relying on choices that you made 
approaches that you embraced, the thinking that that's going to work now. Nope. What you'll come to realize as you progress in life, your circle has all those traits. So they're immune to it. You're saying to yourself, well, I got to find me a way out. There's only one way out. And that is for you to speak your truth, have that conversation with God, place him first, and he will protect you the moment that you atone for everything you did. You can't pick and choose, y'all. It's your life we're talking about. It's your life. We already know what doesn't work, because guess what? You're feeling it in your in your bones. You're feeling it in your heart. And you're dying slow. God, that's not God. That's not God's will. But God is not going to bless you until you get back to that little boy, to that little girl. You keep saying, well, tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow won't come. It's not coming. So you know what you got to do. And when you do, you'll finally be able to proverbially exhale. The tears will start to flow. The purging and cleansing of your spirit will take place and you will be made new. But if you do not see your worth, your reality will only define what it is. God's praying for you. You know I am. I see your worth. And for that, for that, for that, it helps me discern mine. If you don't see your worth, does it surprise you what you're seeing? We are what we attract. It's time for you to do the work and stop running. Be blessed.